And the next item of business is a statement by Neil Gray on national mission to reduce deaths and improve lives of people impacted by drugs and alcohol. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement. Therefore, there should be no interruptions or interventions. And I call on Neil Gray, Cabinet Secretary, uh, around 10 minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to make, uh, update Parliament following the most recent drug and alcohol death statistics for Scotland, which were published recently by National Records of Scotland, and importantly to outline the action we are taking as part of the national mission to reduce harm and fatalities. And as I do, I hope uh, all colleagues would join me in wishing Christina McKelvey well uh, in the treatment she is receiving for cancer in her medical leave of absence. Presiding officer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in 2023, we tragically lost uh, 1,172 lives to drugs and 1,277 lives to alcohol. Every single one of these lives lost is a profound tragedy, and behind these stark statistics are children, parents and friends who have left behind families and loved ones grieving unimaginable losses. The NRS statistics show 2023 it was the second lowest figure in six years for drug deaths. However, the rise of 12 per cent from 2022 is, of course, a heartbreaking disappointment and worry. I offer my sympathies to every person affected by the death of a loved one to drugs or alcohol. These losses are shared by all of us and they serve as a reminder of the work we still have ahead of us. Presiding officer, deprivation has a clear influence on the numbers for drug and alcohol deaths, with people in our most deprived areas 15 times more likely to die from drug misuse compared to people in the least deprived areas. And for alcohol, this is four and a half times more likely. This highlights that drug and alcohol dependency is not purely medical. It is deeply rooted in social determinants and structural inequalities. So as in previous years, we continue to see a high level of polydrug use. Opiates continue to be the drug most commonly implicated in deaths. However, deaths where cocaine was implicated increased. The increasing prevalence of cocaine, especially injected cocaine, presents new challenges for our services. We are also confronting a dangerously and continuously evolving uh, drug landscape with synthetic drugs increasingly infiltrating the market. These highly toxic and potent substances elevate the risks of overdose and death, and their rapidly evolving composition makes regulation and enforcement exceedingly challenging. Public Health Scotland has recently issued public health alerts for both nitazines and xylazine uh, through their radar surveillance system, and I would urge colleagues to share these alerts and sign up to the radar reporting system. Presiding officer, it remains essential that we continue the work of our national mission to stop deaths, reduce harm and improve lives. The unwavering commitment is driven by the belief that change is possible and necessary. It is important to acknowledge the significant progress that has been made through the national mission. Our approach has been ambitious and we have pushed beyond existing levels of service provision, focusing on harm reduction, improving treatment, supporting our workforce and taking a holistic person-centred approach. Widening access to residential rehabilitation for people who use drugs and alcohol is a key part of our national mission. We have made £100 million available from 2021 to 2026 to ensure that 1,000 people receive public, for funded, uh, public funding for their placement each year by 2026, and we are on track to meet that target with 938 publicly funded placements approved in 2023-24. We have also seen significant advancements in harm reduction. Police Scotland is the first force in the UK to issue naloxone kits to all frontline officers, and they have now administered the life-saving drug over 450 times. Public Health Scotland estimates that take-home naloxone has been supplied to nearly three-quarters of all people in Scotland at risk of an opioid overdose by the end of 2023. These are remarkable strides, and we will continue to push for more widespread access. The opening of Scotland's first safer drug consumption facility in Scotland, scheduled for next month, is another significant milestone. The evidence-based initiative will provide a safe space for those most at risk of overdose and will serve as a model for other areas. Uh, and on our 10 medication-assisted treatment standards, the progress has been equally encouraging. By July 24, 90% of MAT standards 1 to 5 were fully implemented, and MAT standards 6 to 10 showed strong early progress, with 91% provisionally green. 
Experiential feedback highlights improvements, fewer and shorter delays in accessing treatment, more choice being offered for opioid substitution therapy, and an increased sense of care and support from workers. This reflects the heart of our mission, to ensure that people receive the help they need when they need it. Presiding officer, as we enter the delivery intensification phase of the national mission, we are putting in place a strategic framework to consider how we can carefully, collectively drive delivery and monitor progress. As the MAT standards benchmarking report from July 24 showed, uh, while we are seeing tremendous progress in standards 1 to 5, we need to accelerate our efforts in areas like psychosocial care and mental health support, uh, critical components of treatment, especially for non-opiate substances. We are developing a national specification for drug and alcohol care services, which will go further than our previously planned treatment target. This will provide clarity on what treatment and recovery services should look like and ensure that people have access to high-quality, stigma-free, trauma-informed services. Additionally, we are stepping up our response to the growing threat of synthetic drugs. Public Health Scotland are expanding their surveillance data to help us respond more swiftly and identify any sudden increases in overdoses. We also plan to establish public-use drug checking facilities in Dundee, Glasgow and Aberdeen, and applications for necessary Home Office licences are currently being processed. These will be complemented by a national testing laboratory located uh, and supported by the University of Dundee to provide further confirmatory testing of samples. We are also looking beyond 2026 in terms of the wider health and social care landscape, the National Care Service, regulation, inspection and funding. Presiding Officer, recovery communities provide essential support, hope and a sense of purpose and belonging. During a recent visit to the Scottish Maritime Museum in Western Bartonshire, I spoke to individuals benefiting from the Skylark recovery project funded through the National Mission CORA funds. Witnessing the dedication of the volunteers and staff, I was reminded of the widespread passion that fuels our efforts. Skylark is just one of over 300 local and grassroots projects which have been supported since the start of the mission. And I would like to thank the people working on the front line in the vital NHS, local partnership and third sector organisations, and alongside the dozens of mutual aid and recovery communities who provide hope in such challenging circumstances. Your dedication is saving lives. Presiding officer, let me now turn to our focus on prevention of alcohol harm. The Scottish Government has taken steps in its world-leading minimum unit pricing policy, with the minimum price increasing to 65 pence per unit from the 30th of September. This is intended to ensure the public health benefits of the policy, the hospitalisations averted, the lives saved, continue and indeed increase. International public health experts in The Lancet stated that, and I quote, policymakers can be confident that there are several hundred people with low income in Scotland who would have died as a result of alcohol who are alive today as a result of minimum unit pricing. However, we know we need to do more to reduce harm. The earlier consultation on potential restrictions in alcohol advertising and marketing, which closed in 2023, made clear that there are a wide range of views. I know our doctors and nurses who see harm to health from alcohol misuse every day want action taken on alcohol marketing, and I have also listened to business and industry concerns. I take all these concerns seriously. We remain committed to progressing this work to ensure it will have the greatest impact, particularly on children and young people exposed to alcohol advertising and marketing, while striking the right balance on potential effects on business and industry. We therefore need a route to achieve that. Presiding officer, it is clear that steps to reduce alcohol harm are vital to supporting good public health and to reduce alcohol-specific deaths. It is therefore vital that we are clear on the evidence and propo that proposals would be effective, that action to reduce alcohol harm supports good public health and would reduce alcohol-specific deaths, and that decisions we take are led by evidence balanced with the potential impact on the wider economy. Therefore, I will commission Public Health Scotland to carry out a review of the evidence on the range of options to reduce exposure to alcohol marketing to help us in this aim. Presiding officer, that work is for the future. We are also taking action right now by ensuring people with problematic alcohol use continue to receive the same quality of care as those with problematic drug use. So I can confirm that the forthcoming alcohol treatment guidelines will also provide support for alcohol treatment similar to the medication-assisted treatment standards for drugs. 
In addition, the publication of Public Health Scotland's review into how alcohol brief interventions are delivered is imminent, and we will incorporate those recommendations into our national treatment specification for drug and al alcohol treatment. We also continue to support innovative pilots, such as the Managed Alcohol Programme and the Primary Care Alcohol Nurse Outreach Service, which has recently been embedded into mainstream services in Glasgow City ADP. Presiding officer, to conclude, we continue to strive to stop deaths, reduce harm and improve lives. And we do that in a time of unprecedented and significant financial challenge. This government has consistently warned of the challenge ahead in our public finances. But we will continue to support people in services where they need it most, and that is why the Government has made over £150 million available this year to continue the progress we have made as a result of the national mission. Three quarters of this funded funding is delivered through local alcohol and drug partnerships, who play a central role in delivery and responding to local need. It is essential that we continue addressing the stark inequalities in drug deaths, particularly in our most deprived areas. We must focus on prevention through education. We must also target the structural and social determinants of health. This will require increased collaboration across government departments, statutory and third sector partners. It is clear presiding officer, that no single service can tackle this issue alone. No single intervention is or will be enough. Only through working together, delivering a range of harm reduction support opportunities, can we create a Scotland where everyone has the support they need. And we must pull together harness the incredible work already been done and drive forward with a shared sense of purpose. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for that, after which we will need to uh, move on to the next item of business. I'd encourage members wishing to ask a question. Uh, we haven't already done so to press the request to speak buttons. And I call first Sue Webber. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of the statement, and I too want to wish Christina McKelvey well for her speedy recovery. Uh, this week's harrowing statistics, however, expose the total failure of the SNP to tackle this health crisis. They claim significant progress has been made through their national mission, yet this, yet this week we learned that 1,172 people died from drug misuse in 2023, an increase of 12 per cent on last year. And this week's provisional data revealed that there have already been 589 suspected drug deaths in the first six months of 2024. As a 2 per cent drop from the same period in 2023, some might mistaken, mistakenly claim a corner is being turned, but it is up 5 per cent on 2022. Nothing is changing. The SNP came to power over 17 years ago. And in this time, over 33,000 Scots have lost their lives to drug or alcohol-related illnesses. This is a damning indictment of their continued mismanagement. SNP politicians should hang their heads in shame, but instead they carry on, determined to prioritise decriminalisation and harm reduction over recovery. This is the wrong message. Where is the focus on recovery, on rehabilitation? And they have no idea what they are doing. Strathclyde University's Health Research Unit confirms there is a critical gap between the SNP's understanding question, of inequalities and what works to tackle them. It is clear the SNP strategies lack a rigorous evaluation of their effectiveness. Cabinet Secretary, do you really believe that the right level of response to learning what the alcohol deaths are at their highest level for 15 years is to commission a review into adverts? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. I thank uh, Sue Webber for her contribution. I do not in any way shirk the responsibility that we have for what are harrowing figures that are before us. And I, I absolutely do not deny the scale of the challenge that is before us. And that is why I do not believe any single intervention or single area of response uh, is appropriate. I think we need a range of uh, responses available to us, which is why uh, we have been increasing the opportunity for support to be there for recovery as well as harm reduction. Because we can see from the statistics available from uh, Police Scotland uh, and from alcohol and drug partnerships that the likes of uh, naloxone have uh, saved uh, hundreds of lives. Um, so I think it is a requirement for us not to focus on one area against another, but to ensure uh, that we are taking a range of approaches, and that is including uh, on alcohol uh, advertising as well, because we know that we, need to t we cannot uh, continue as we are going on. Uh, we need to see improvement uh, in uh, both our relationship with uh, drugs and alcohol. Jackie Bailey. 
Can I start by echoing the best wishes to Christina McKelvey for successful treatment? Presiding officer, I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's visit to the Skylark Recovery Trust as they do very great work in my constituency. But 1,277 alcohol deaths last year is the highest number in the last 15 years and a tragedy for each of the families affected. It is clear that what we are doing currently for both drugs and alcohol is not yet working. There is a suggestion that the government's priority is tackling drugs and that is eclipsing the efforts and resources needed to tackle alcohol problems. Those of us with long memories, presiding officer, will recall the SNP's cuts to alcohol and drug treatment services, some £46 million sliced out the budget before the national mission was in place. And now we learn that there is a decline of 40 per cent in people being referred to structured alcohol services. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, will he separate the alcohol and drugs funding streams so there is transparency? And secondly, if he's looking to raise revenue, what consideration has been given to a targeted levy to claw back the money that supermarkets will make from the increased revenue from Cabinet minimum Secretary. unit pricing? First of all, um, can I once again pay tribute to the incredible work that uh, is being delivered through uh, Skylark, but also through the range of community and grassroots organisations across Scotland, like Skylark, that are doing incredible work. And it was, uh, while incredibly harrowing, clearly to, um, he, uh, to hear the stories of families who have been impacted by family members they have lost through problematic uh, uh, drug use and a drug dependency. It was also uh, filled me with great hope that the family members, uh, in particular, focused on the impact that has been made over recent years in reducing the stigma uh, and the impact the national mission has had on people feeling, both those with uh, drug dependency and their families, feeling that there is services there for them, there is support uh, 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 out there for them. And that is something that I, I wish uh, to put on the record. My thanks to them for that incredible work. Um, in, in terms of the uh, investments that we're making in alcohol and drug partnerships, it is, and I, I hope you can uh, take, uh, I hope Jackie Bailey can take from the statement that I've just made, it is a shared endeavour that we are trying, it is a, uh, a, an area of uh, shared priority on both alcohol and drugs. It's not one over the other. Um, and the work that we're seeking to do on alcohol services is clear, I hope, from the statement that I have made. Um, and uh, she will know that there has been consideration paid uh, to uh, whether or not uh, a levy should be administered as a result of the increase in minimum unit price, and we'll give further updates on that in due course. Thank you. There's a lot of interest in this issue, as you might expect, and therefore we're going to have to have um, brief questions and brief responses wherever possible. I'm calling Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Douglas Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his statement. There's absolutely no escaping the deep complexities associated with tackling drug and alcohol harm. And I know the Cabinet Secretary agrees with me that the commitment of those working in this sphere cannot be understated. The Cabinet Secretary made reference to workforce in his statement, and through my engagement with local ADP services, I am aware concerns exist around workforce planning, specifically the option of a national qualification and a national training plan. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide an update on the work being done to address these points, thereby by ensuring we develop a highly skilled workforce and secure improved retention. Cabinet Secretary. Officer, and I thank Audrey Nicholl for her question and the engagement that she's had with her local ADP services uh, in the North East. The, the Scottish Government's Drug and Alcohol Workforce Action Plan sets out the actions that we are taking to support improved workforce planning and ensure that staff have the skills and knowledge required to deliver services. Specifically, the plan commits us to developing a learning pathway for, uh, to communicate and signpost available training opportunities to the entire drug and alcohol workforce, facilitate the development of competencies for workers who support people who use drugs and alcohol and identify the training opportunities and provide support for the development of continuous career development opportunities. And across Scotland, training providers uh, provide uh, high-quality education to learners at all levels to support this, and we will continue to fund uh, NHS boards uh, in order to support their work in this endeavour too. Douglas Ross, to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I have to say this is a very underwhelming statement on such a crucial issue. And sadly, it follows earlier statements that we've heard from the health team, asked 10 times if his government had failed people who are suffering from drug abuse. The Cabinet Secretary refused to answer. And just this week, the Public Health Minister called the alcohol deaths disappointing. They're not disappointing. They're tragic, they're appalling, and they are avoidable with the right policies. 
So the Cabinet Secretary will know I have brought forward a bill for the right to recovery. It's been published. It's in the public domain. Is there anything in that bill that he cannot support? And if not, will he tell us today that SNP members will support the right Cabinet to recovery? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much uh, indeed. First of all, uh, on, on Douglas Ross's point around the stark figures before us. I, I have said in my statement that I accept that these are unacceptable, they are tragic, uh, and I emulate uh, Douglas Ross's words uh, in that regard. There is no hiding from the fact that these are appalling set of statistics. Of course they are. Um, and that is why uh, on Douglas Ross's uh, uh, suggestion in the bill that he has published, uh, the government has committed to engaging with him on that, because um, I don't believe that there is a, a single answer to the questions that are before us. I believe that there are a multitude of areas that we need to progress, um, and we will engage, uh, we've got a meeting coming up with Mr Ross, uh, both myself and the First Minister, in order to discuss uh, just that, his bill. Um, but there are uh, further interventions that we are seeking to progress, both on the harm reduction and recovery uh, uh, side that I stated in my uh, statement, uh, because I believe that there is hope there and that we can see a, a difference being made uh, through working together in the way that he suggests. Stuart McMillan, to be followed by Paul Sweeney. Uh, thank you, President Officer. First, I'd like to refer members to my register of interests as the Chair of Moving On Inverclyde, a local recovery service. The Cab Secretary will be aware that Inverclyde has the third highest level of drugs deaths and also the highest level of alcohol deaths, and that I recently hosted a round table involving third, and, and third sectors and public sector organisations to help share information and understanding around the issues that my community faces. Now, what consideration will the Cabinet Secretary give to ensuring that Inverclyde is classed as an area of priority when it comes to funding and also new initiatives to help local organisations work to help save lives in my community? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. And I thank uh, Mr McMillan for uh, his work, for all the work that he's doing to help local partners in Inverclyde to rise to the challenges that are being faced. And I received uh, incredibly good feedback from uh, Alison Byrne uh, uh, around uh, the, uh, the meeting that he uh, organised. Uh, and while we recognise the innovative approaches being taken and the commitment shared across delivery partners in the area, uh, we also note the particular needs of people in Inverclyde. And with that in mind, uh, we are keen to ensure that all support possible is available to partners in Inverclyde, and this will be a major consideration in future planning. We need to ensure that support is available to all parts of Scotland, clearly, but the distribution of national mission funding adjusted through the NRAC formula does, it does take some account of levels of deprivation and specific need. Paul Sweeney, need to be followed by Bill Kidd. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The first overdose prevention centre in Scotland opened four years ago yesterday. It supervised just about a thousand injections and saved eight lives. It was staffed by volunteers. Uh, now, four years later, the state has finally caught up, but hundreds of people have unnecessarily died in the interim period. I welcome the opening of the new OPC in Glasgow next month. But can the Cabinet Secretary assure us that it won't simply be a box-ticking exercise, but we will progress it to 24-hour operation and full integration with routes to rehabilitation and other support services so critical to recovery? The first person who came to the OPC four years ago said, sorry, I'm not used to people treating me so nicely. That is at its core. It's about human dignity and supporting people to the pathways they need to survive. Cabinet Secretary. I absolutely agree with Paul Sweeney and I pay tribute to the work that uh, he has done in, in this area along with other colleagues in, in, in the chamber and, and Peter Crichton uh, as well who uh, has led so much of the campaigning for this to uh, take shape. And I think um, Paul Sweeney is right that this has got to be uh, about person-centred, dignified uh, support for people who uh, have experienced uh, often a lifetime of trauma and stigma. Uh, actually been treated with dignity and respect in a, in a way that reduces harm, save lives uh, and helps them on a path to recovery. Um, so I um, will uh, absolutely take on board the, the questions uh, that uh, Mr Sweeney raises about how we can further see that embedded and expanded uh, and respond to them in due course. Bill Kidd to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, in our constituencies across Scotland, as we have heard, we are all aware of the countless unsung heroes and organisations that do so much to support those whose lives have been impacted by drugs and alcohol. Groups like Men Matter in Drum Chapel who support 500 men a week with a variety of issues. Will the Cabinet Secretary join me in recognising and thanking these unsung heroes for their invaluable work? And can he say what support the Scottish Government is providing to these groups, particularly at a time of budget constraint? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. And yes, I, I would absolutely 
echo the thanks uh, that uh, Bill Kidd uh, has uh, levelled to uh, Men Matter in, in, in Drumchapel. I firmly believe that the progress we have made in the national mission would not have been possible without the work of our frontline workers uh, and volunteers in statu statutory services, the third sector organisations and grassroots projects like Men Matter. Their dedication provides hope in the darkest of time, and um, I would like to thank them for their tireless efforts. Uh, through the National Mission Corps of Funds, we have been able to distribute £13 million of funding this year to over 300 projects across Scotland. The organisations and projects being delivered are diverse, ranging from small community groups to public sector bodies, and together they have supported nearly 34,000 people this year. Uh, I have had the privilege, as I said, of being able to attend one of these projects at Skylark uh, to see the positive impact made to the lives of people with drug and alcohol dependency, their families uh, and their local communities. Thank you. Maggie Chapman to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you. I extend my condolences and deepest sympathies to every person affected by these tragic deaths. Year after year, these figures offer a grim picture of the situation. And while I recognise the efforts outlined by the Cabinet Secretary to prevent deaths, it is clearly not enough. Alcohol harm in Scotland is a public health emergency and a human rights issue. The Cabinet Secretary referenced the earlier consultation on restrictions on alcohol advertising and marketing, but no legislation was confirmed in last week's programme for government, and many advocates criticised the lack of progress on this issue. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm if the Scottish Government is committed to introducing these measures in this parliamentary term, and if not, what actions are being taken in this area? Cabinet Secretary. I recognise um, Maggie Chapman's interest in this area and, and long-standing uh, work on, on, on advocating on this front. Um, I uh, have set out in the statement the um, work that I will be commissioning Public Health Scotland to do to review the evidence uh, in this area, because I think it is important, as we have seen through minimum unit pricing, the importance of uh, leading this on an evidential basis. Uh, and then, based on the report that comes back from Public Health Scotland on that evidence, uh, uh, depending on, on what we get back, we will, of course, then be consulting on, on what more steps we can take uh, to reduce uh, the impact that alcohol advertising and marketing has. It has to be proportionate, it has to be based on evidence, and that is why we are taking these steps to make sure that that is just the case. Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Emma Harper. Danny officer, I'm very grateful to the government for acquiescing to Lib Dem requests for this statement this afternoon. I've been in Parliament eight years, and in, the, in those eight years, the news in this topic has never been good. It's always getting worse. Occasionally, it gets less bad, but we're, here we are again. As we heard, next month, the Overdose Prevention Centre will finally become operational, and the UK Home Office have signalled that they may be willing to look at our evidence and roll that out across the UK, but we cannot wait for the end of that pilot to start with the preparatory work to roll that, uh, those centres out across the country, particularly in rural areas. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, um, at the conclusion of that pilot, how swiftly can we roll these out across the country? Cabinet Secretary. So I think, uh, first of all, I, I, I recognise um, uh, Mr. Cole Hamilton's uh, points and, and recognise the efforts that he has made in this area. The, um, the value of the pilot is, is obvious in terms of gathering the evidence, but I don't think we should be looking at that in isolation in terms of the work that is coming forward that I hope will make a major difference. Uh, the, the, the testing centres that we're hoping to see in Aberdeen, Dundee and Glasgow, I think, have a, 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 a potentially... Uh, uh, game-changing because the challenge, the new challenge that we're facing from synthetic opioids uh, and uh, other uh, uh, other uh, uh, substances coming into the market, such as uh, nitazines and, and xylazine, are posing a dangerous threat because people literally do not know what they are taking, uh, nor the quantities, uh, and it is a huge risk to overdose. So I think, alongside. The, um, the safe consumption room uh, pilot. I also think that the, the drug testing facilities uh, have an opportunity to really uh, drive down on the harm reduction uh, that we want to see. Emma Harper to be followed by Sandra Skohani. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary spoke about alcohol and drug partnerships. Could the Cabinet Secretary reiterate and reassure a Chamber of the positive relationships that the Scottish Government has with ADPs across the country, particularly in Dumfries and Galloway and the Borders, and how their crucial work will continue to be supported and encouraged. 
Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I can. The, the, there's a programme of regular engagement between Scottish Government officials and ADP coordinators uh, that's in place to ensure vital regular information exchange and collaboration on policy development. Uh, at the working level, uh, our partners in Public Health Scotland work closely with us to actively support local areas in their MAP implementation efforts. And uh, though uh, she's currently undertaking leave, uh, the Minister for Drug and Alcohol Policy is scheduled to meet with local leaders uh, across all localities to discuss progress and improvement of partnership working and, and service delivery. Sandy Skolhani to be followed by Colette Stevenson. Declaration of Interest as a practising NHS GP. Really, there is nothing new in this statement but simply a rehash of previous decisions that have clearly failed the people of Scotland, failed families, failed the record number of people who died due to alcohol and drugs this year. The facts are that alcohol treatment regimes work and the SNP's flagship MUP Silver Bullet has not been enough to stop alcohol deaths spiralling to a record 15-year high. So will the Cabinet Secretary increase funding to treatment centres and will the Cabinet Secretary take the opportunity to offer a genuine apology to the families of those who died, unlike Jenny Minto's pathetic and woefully inadequate response in her STV interview yesterday? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I, I thank uh, Sanders Galhani uh, Sanders for his contribution. No, I don't think uh, uh, personalising it in that way is helpful in addressing a very serious issue that is before us. Um, now, the, the, the evidence is clear that minimum unit pricing uh, has saved lives. Um, the evaluation that was carried out by Public Health Scotland that has been uh, reviewed by the UK Statistics Authority and peer-reviewed through the Lancet has uh, estimated that there has been a 13 per cent reduction in deaths uh, as a result of minimum unit pricing uh, and a, a particular uh, impact uh, in those areas uh, of higher deprivation, which the statistics demonstrate very clearly uh, the direct correlation that there is between deprivation uh, and alcohol and drug dependency. So, of course, uh, I have already stated, and, and, and on this point I agree with Sandish Gulhani, that of course no one um, measure or intervention is going to be enough. We need a range, which is why I will continue to engage with him and his colleagues uh, around further areas of, uh, that we can explore in order to that we can reduce harm, uh, save lives and see people on the path to recovery. Okay, there's a number of members that still want to ask questions. I want to get them all in. There will need to be brief questions and as brief as possible answers. First, Colette Stevenson to be followed by Michael Mara. <coughs> uh, President officer, just like their relatives, the families of people affected by substance use also experience stigma and isolation. They are often the first responders to their loved ones' crises. So the rights of those family members must be protected and upheld and they should be empowered to advocate for themselves and for their loved ones. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline how the Scottish Government and partners are funding and working to ensure support is available and accessible everywhere in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Colette Stevenson is absolutely right, and I have already set out in response to other colleagues around um, the the first-person testimony that I have received from families around the reduction of stigma that there has been and the, the greater awareness of uh, services being available to uh, those with an alcohol or drug dependency and their families. Uh, our families uh, framework sets out how we will improve holistic support for families affected by drugs and alcohol by taking a whole family approach, ensuring that families receive support that is free from stigma and is trauma-informed. And The framework also sets out that families should be involved in the development and delivery of services that affect them and their loved one at local and national level. We are also working with local areas to implement family inclusive practice across alcohol and drug services and that framework is supported by investment totalling £6.5 million a year over the life of the Parliament and providing ADPs with an additional £3.5 million per year over the life of the Parliament to help implement the framework locally. Michael Mana to be followed by Craig Hoy. Thank you, President Officer. Can I declare an interest as having led uh, the team that produced the data underpinning the Dundee Judge Commission in 2019? I'm afraid that the government's account of progress on MAT standards does not tally with the experience of service reform on the ground in much parts of many parts of the country. Um, for example, some of the most basic recommendations of the Dundee Judge Commission from as far back as 2019 are yet to be fulfilled. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me today when Constitution House in Dundee will be closed? And if he cannot, will he endeavour to find out when that will happen? And I would ask the Cabinet Secretary. 
if he is confident that MAT standards are now being delivered to such a high extent, does it not call into question their efficacy in dealing with the problem? So I have already pointed out a number of times that there is no one single intervention that is going to make a difference. I think there are I have set out in the statement the progress that has been demonstrated in terms of the implementation of MAT standards, and I would be more than happy uh, to meet with uh, Mr Mara to discuss the experience that he is narrating uh, from uh, his region, um, because I believe that, that that progress is important and uh, is demonstrable. But I would be more than happy to meet with him to discuss those issues that he raises. And finally, Craig Hoy. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To um, ask the Minister um, what evidence uh, will be available to the review that Public Health Scotland will undertake that was not uh, made available to the previous uh, review into alcohol marketing? And is he going to be commissioning a new consultation? And if he is, what role will the alcohol industry play in, in that process? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. I thank Craig Hoy for his question. The, the, the review that I'm going to be commissioning Public Health Scotland to look at will look at all of the evidence available to both domestically and internationally in terms of the impact that alcohol advertising and marketing uh, makes. Um, and um, based on that review and the recommendations that come through it, the evidence that is there, uh, we will then uh, consult on uh, if there are areas that Public Health Scotland recommend would make a difference uh, and are, uh, uh, that are uh, pragmatic and evidence-based that will make a difference in terms of reducing alcohol harm. Um, uh, I've uh, had a, uh, well, continued conversations uh, with um, uh, businesses and, and the, uh, around the economic impact uh, and make sure that this is proportionate uh, based on the evidence available uh, and would obviously seek to work with them to see them lead on areas themselves and where they can help to uh, see a reduction in alcohol harm, but I believe that there is going to be uh, important work to do here uh, to make sure that we reduce harm, save lives uh, and see people into recovery. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes this item of business. There will be a brief pause before we move on to the next item of business to allow front benches to change.